Canola oil is a commonly used type of cooking oil that's derived from the seed of the canola plant, which North American farmers have been growing for about 30 years now. The plant blooms in the summer, producing bright yellow flowers. Farmers harvest the seeds from pods, which form after these flowers die off. Canola oil's seeds are cultivated from the rapeseed plant, which, in recent years, has had its name changed due to unpleasant associations. This same rebranding has renamed other popular oils such as vegetable oil, which was originally known as diarrhea juice. Unlike olive oil, canola oil is not typically sold in virgin varieties. For more info on finding virgins, check your local mirror. Canola oil is one of the healthiest oils compared to other cooking oils, which is why it's commonly used to soak and ruin perfectly good salads. The flavor of canola oil is also so rich and delicious, most professional chefs don't even bother turning on the heat when using canola oil. They let the oil itself cook and flavor the meat. Go ahead and try this secret cooking tip for your next steak dinner. Canola seeds start out loaded with foreign material. A vibrating sieve cleans out this foreign material the same way your government's firewall would depending on which people's republic you live in. The foreign material is sifted to the top, where it's collected, processed, and sold as foreign oil, a popular staple of the American diet. The seeds pass by a magnet, which should raise concerns that you're not getting enough iron in your diet. We would like to apologize for that joke. Next, the seeds enter a roller mill, which crushes them into little frostings of flakes. These flakes are more than good for oil production. They're adequate. Meanwhile, in the factory bathroom, Elsewhere in the factory, the canola seeds have been pressed together to extract their oils, resulting in some leftover canola cake. Canola cake is sometimes sold in stores as a delicious alternative to birthday cake. And by delicious, I mean depressing. The cake is usually put into this flood tank to drown out any thoughts of escape. The oil is then stored in these massive silos, which normally might be impressive if it weren't for the goddamn motherfucking choo-choo train parked right next to them. Holy shit, what a magnificent train. Oh man, today's gonna be a good day. In the refining phase, tanks spin the oil at high speed, causing it to vomit itself into a chute. Impurities are processed out of the oil, which are sold to soap manufacturers, which makes very little sense if you think about it. A light is shown on the oil to make sure no ghosts are hiding in it. Haunted canola oil may taste significantly better, but each spoonful takes literal years off of the consumer's lifespans, which is bad for business. And then, the vault is opened. Few mortal men know what true horrors lie dormant within the vault, for it was sealed centuries ago. But they do know it must be regularly opened to allow the excess waste product of the demons to escape, lest they grow restless, and try to destroy their sacred prison. Meanwhile, at the factory's embarrassingly basic chemistry set, technicians recreate factory conditions to test the oil for impurities. For some reason, this oil sells for about $200 per bottle, and the producers have told me I'm only allowed to try some when I'm older. Back to the refinery, we are finally ready to move on to one of the finest filling machines on God's green earth. Look at its magnificent movements, its clandestine cadences, its immaculate machinations. My goodness, this is even better than that train earlier. After this beautiful ballet, the bottles can finally be rinsed on the inside with canola oil.
Then it's onto the capping machine, which, and I know for a fact I'm not alone when I say this, but, based on its design, I'd like to have sex with it. The labels are applied to the bottles as they spin around to keep the oil dizzy, so by the time it ends up on store shelves, it's too disoriented to remember the horrors it saw within the vault.